And how's it going everyone? It's me, it's Count here with a brand new Pokemon Go video. Today I'm going to be talking about the Team Go Rocket leaders, more specifically how you can beat the new lineup of Team Go Rocket leaders. They are actually really easy compared to past sets, so this is going to be a complete guide and I really hope you enjoy it. So let's roll the intro and jump right into it. Alright, so as you may or may not know, the most recent Team Go Rocket Takeover event, which is currently ongoing at the time that I recorded this video, did bring a shakeup to the lineups for all of the Team Go Rocket leaders. This of course means there's brand new potential shiny shadows, as well as a whole bunch of Pokemon that will give you a little bit of trouble if you are not well prepared. So let's go over each of the leaders right now. First and foremost, let's start with Sierra. This is, of course, typically one of the most powerful Team Go Rocket leaders, but this time around she's actually quite easy. First and foremost, you will be going up against Shadow Nidoran as her first Pokemon, and it's pretty straightforward. It's a straight poison type Pokemon, so any Psychic type, more specifically Mewtwo or Lugia, will be very effective against this particular Pokemon. Probably the absolute best Pokemon you can bring is of course Shadow Mewtwo. This Pokemon is extremely powerful, it dishes out a lot of damage, and will pretty much take down Nidoran with no issue at all. Now the second second Pokemon is also potentially going to be a poison type Pokemon. You could either go up against Shadow Beedrill or Shadow Valplume. Both of these Pokemon have the poison typing, so with Shadow Mewtwo, you have a chance of just taking out two Pokemon for one. Now the best way you can do this is to have a Shadow Mewtwo with Confusion and Psy Strike. I highly suggest not going with any other moveset for Mewtwo, mainly because both of these moves dish out quite a lot of damage. This will allow you to defeat any of these Shadow Pokemon real easily without having to worry about Mewtwo getting knocked out itself. But of course when it comes to the Team Go Rocket leaders do keep in mind that they do actually use their shields which is obviously very different from the grunts and you can use this to your advantage knowing that when it comes to any Team Go Rocket leader battle or grunt battle they will actually have a delay after you use a charge move or after they use a charge move. So you could dish out a little bit more damage before they start attacking again and in most cases this could allow you to knock out the Pokemon before they can get off their own charge attack. So yeah, when it comes to Sierra, the first two Pokemon are going to be weak against Psychic types, but another potential Pokemon that it can have as the second Pokemon is actually Slowbro. But there's actually one Pokemon that could work really well, and that is actually Gyarados. Now the reason why I say that is of course because Gyarados can have dark type moves with bite and crunch and it also has that water typing which means it's going to resist a lot of Shadow Slowbro's moves. And then of course leading into the third Pokemon you could potentially have either Houndoom, Marowak, or Nidoqueen. Now all three of these Pokemon are weak against the two Pokemon that I just mentioned. So if you are going up against a Shadow Houndoom make sure you use a Gyarados with a water type charge attack like like Aqua Tail, that's going to take down Shadow Houndoom. If you have a Gyarados with two charge moves unlocked, that's going to be extremely powerful against Sierra. So I highly suggest you invest into one. It's going to be really strong against this boss. Now the second Pokemon that it could have is of course Shadow Marowak, but there's a lot of different counters that you could use against Shadow Marowak. Of course, the Gyarados is going to be really strong against this, but since you have three Pokemon slots that you can use and two of them are are filled up, you could save that third one for a fairy type that's going to be really strong against Shadow Marowak. Now the third potential Pokemon is Shadow Nidoqueen, which is the evolved form of Nidoran and pretty straightforward. If you still have your Shadow Mewtwo, it's going to be really strong against Shadow Nidoqueen. And of course, you could just run with a whole bunch of Psychic types and then just have your third Pokemon be a counter to Shadow Marowak or Shadow Houndoom, and that could be the best way to go. Honestly, when it comes to Sierra, what I'm probably going to do is have two really powerful Psychic types and then have a very strong Water type to brown them up. I think this is probably the best team that you can go with, and of course, it's just going to give you all the coverage that you need against Sierra. But yeah, next let's move on to Cliff, because the counters are going to be somewhat similar to Sierra. 
First and foremost, he's going to have Shadow Grimer. This is of course a Pokemon that many of you should be familiar with because it was appearing in Grunt Battles. So yeah, this Pokemon is pretty straightforward. It's a Poison type, so bring a Psychic type just like with Sierra and you'll be good to go. And actually all three of the potential second Pokemon that Cliff will use are weak against Psychic types. So that's something you should definitely keep in mind. If you are running a Psychic type against Cliff, you'll be good to go for the first two Pokemon. Now the three Pokemon are of course Shadow Venusaur, Shadow Crobat, and Shadow Machamp. All three of these are weak against Psychic types so do keep that in mind. Now the third Pokemon is where it gets a little tricky. It could have either Shadow Tyranitar, Shadow Charizard, or Shadow Arcanine and Cliff's Pokemon are extremely powerful. But you could actually prepare for this really easily because all three of these Pokemon are actually weak against water types. So if you have a really strong water type then you will be pretty much fully covered against Cliff. I would construct your team this way. I would have the first two Pokemon be psychic types and then have the third Pokemon be a very strong water type. Probably your best Kyogre will do here but you could also go with Gyarados like I mentioned before or even a Swampert because Swampert is strong against most of these Pokemon. And finally, let's move on to Arlo, which I believe is going to be the most difficult Team Go Rocket leader out of this rotation. It has a lot of type coverage with its team, so it's going to prove to be a little bit trickier. I highly suggest you do a little bit of scouting before you jump into it. And of course, when it comes to Gligar, it's not necessarily the most highly sought after Shiny Shadow. So maybe you could just skip this one and go for either Sierra or Cliff. But if you want to challenge Arlo, then this is what you should do. First and foremost, Shadow Gligar does have a lot of type coverage, but if you were to use a Pokemon like Ho-Oh or maybe Articuno, that is going to be really strong considering its weakness to a lot of different moves that both Ho-Oh and Articuno have. If you have a Ho-Oh with Hidden Power and Brave Bird, that could be enough to take down this Pokemon. And of course, the reason why I suggest Ho-Oh or Articuno is because they have the flying typing, which is going to allow them to resist a lot of Gligar's moves, which typically lean towards flying type attacks. Now the second Pokemon that Arlo could potentially bring will be either Shadow Mawile, Shadow Lapras, or Shadow Cradilly. Now all three of these Pokemon are extremely different from the others, so I highly suggest you do a little bit of scouting ahead of time and see what the second Pokemon is. Now when it comes to Shadow Mawile, it's pretty straightforward. You will want to bring a fire type Pokemon. Typically, I'd like to go with Entei considering its high TDO and the fact that it does have Flame Charge, which is the absolute best fire type charge attack when it comes to these Team Go Rocket leader battles. And that is of course because you could dish out a lot of Flame Charge attacks and this is going to allow you to burn through their shields as well as see an increase to your fast attacks which will allow you to melt it down even faster. Now let's say the second Pokemon is Shadow Lapras, then you will want to bring an electric type that's really strong against it. I suggest going with a Pokemon like Shadow Raikou with Thundershock and Wild Charge that is just going to completely melt down Shadow Lapras and just like with Entei you are able to burn through its shields really quickly and you will absolutely want to make sure you burn out both of their shields before you get to the third Pokemon. Now the third potential second Pokemon that Arla will bring is Shadow Cradilly and it's a pretty straightforward one. You will just want to bring a Pokemon that is strong against grass types like typically Genesect with Fury Cutter and X Scissor is really good because again it will burn through shields, it will dish out a lot of damage, and it will survive a lot of Cradilly's attacks. Now let's move on to the third Pokemon and you could actually get kind of lucky and have Scizor as the third Pokemon which means if you used a fire type Pokemon for the second Pokemon then it's going to be strong against Scizor as well. In the most ideal scenario you will want to go up against Arlo that is running both Shadow Scizor and Shadow Mawile then you will just need one fire type that will take on both of them. But regardless if you're going up against Shadow Scizor make sure you have a pocket fire type that's going to deal double damage against this Pokemon and bring it down really quickly. Now the other two Pokemon that Arlo could potentially bring in the third slot are going to give you a lot of trouble because they are just that hard hitting. First and foremost he can potentially bring Shadow Snorlax and many of you who are familiar with this Pokemon know just how problematic it is and yes this Snorlax is going to be slightly more powerful than when you go up against it in the grunt battles so I highly suggest you bring something that's going to both resist a lot 
lot of Snorlax's moves, as well as dish out super effective damage. One of the big suggestions is of course Melmetal with super power, it does resist a lot of those moves, but also dishes out super effective damage with super power, so that's something you can consider. And then of course the third potential Pokemon is Gardevoir and this Pokemon is super powerful. Bring a very powerful Steel type though and you should be able to melt it down no problem. I highly suggest Metagross, that is probably the best counter against Gardevoir. You should be good to go with Bullet Punch and Meteor Mash, it'll just completely melt down Gardevoir. So yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for this video. I really hope you found it to be helpful. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if it's your first time here. And don't forget that little bell so you stay notified on whenever I upload videos and leave a comment down below what you think about the new Team Go Rocket leaders as well as the shiny shadow Pokemon that they could potentially give you. And yeah, that's gonna be it. I'm Conchinsula. Be safe, have fun, love yourself, and I'll catch you all later.